Hello everyone, this is topic 6 for exam 2, integration by parts, what I call the uh, single application. And so we'll see other situations where integration by parts is required. Integration by parts is basically derived from the product rule. So if you recall the product rule, let's say um, the differential, the derivative with respect to x, of u times v, where we're assuming u and v are both differentiable functions of x. We know that's the first factor u, derivative of the second dv dx, plus the second factor v, times the derivative of the first du dx. And if we put that, because we're going to want to think about uh, integration, which is anti-differentiation <clears throat> we'll put that in differential form that is the differential of u times v would be equal to u times the differential dv plus v times the differential du and then what we're going to do is we're going to integrate so again, think of integration as anti-differentiation. And we'll take the integral of both sides. So the integral of the differential of u times v will be the integral of, just put some parentheses around this for now, u dv plus v du. And if you think about the left side, <coughs> the integral of the differential of something, since integration is anti-differentiation, the integration undoes the differential, and you just get the quantity, in this case, u times v. And then on the right side, what we'll do is we'll uh, exercise the integration property that the integral of a sum is the sum of the integrals. So that's the integral of u dv plus the integral of v du, and then I'm just going to move the VD, the integral of vdu uh, to the left-hand side, and so we have uv minus the integral of vdu is equal to the integral of u dv, and although that's the opposite of the way we think about it, that is the product rule. We, we typically think about it reading it from right to left, as we'll state formally here in the theorem. So if we let u and v be functions with continuous derivatives, just simply meaning that their derivatives exist and are continuous, um, then we say that the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du, so just as we had proven. And so that's our integration by parts formula. And notice that it is a product of two different types of functions. We have a u and a dv. And it's required for situations like the following. Um, seemingly simple looking integrals, like number one, where we might say try to fit the form of e to the u, because we know exponentials dominate over the algebraics. We would choose u to be 5x, the du would be 5dx, and you could modify the by the 5, but the problem is we have this extra x variable, okay, that is stopping us from fitting that basic form. So that's why that u substitution won't work. And so similarly here, we would try to, if it's going to fit a basic form, we would try for the cosine of u, and we'd pick u to be 3x, but pretty much the same argument. du would be 3dx. You could modify by the 3, but again, the problem is you have this extra x variable, so that's why that won't work. And then this one's even worse, because the only choice, remember, when a natural log is in the integrand, is to pick it to be your u, and if you're lucky, your du will be there. And the du is 1 over x, and obviously we don't have that. We have x to the 7th. And so that's why that won't work. 
So all of these situations require integration by parts. And notice that they have a product of two different types of functions uh, in the integrand, and they are not fitting a basic integration formula. So the thing is, in order to use the integration by parts formula here, we have to be able to pick our u and, calc and uh, choose our u and our dv appropriately. And then what we're going to do, if you look at the right side of the formula, it contains v, which is the antiderivative of dv. So whatever we choose for dv, we're going to have to integrate to get v. And the formula also contains du, which is the derivative of u. So whatever we choose for u, we're going to have to calculate the differential du. So here are some guidelines as to how to choose your u and your dv when using this method of integration by parts. We want to let dv be the more complicated factor of the integrand. I put that in quotes. Um, but the more complicated factor that fits a basic integration formula. And at the same time, we want to let u be the factor of the integrand such that its derivative is, and I put that in quotes as well, simpler. Now, if we look at those same examples again, and we think about the guidelines, when you look at x and e to the 5x, like you're trying to choose between them, who's going to be u and which one's going to be dv? And if you look at the first guideline, it says the more complicated factor. Well, between x and e to the 5x, more, the more complicated factor is the exponential function, e to the 5x. It's obviously more sophisticated than just x. And so the question is, do we have a basic integration formula for e to the 5x? And we actually do. That fits the form for the integral of e to the kx with respect to x, which integrates easily to be 1 over k e to the kx plus a constant. <coughs> so you're right. you might recall me telling you about three weeks ago that in about three weeks we'll be integrating these types of things on a daily basis. And guess what? today's the day right so now based on just that first guideline we didn't even address the second guideline yet based on the first guideline we'd say e to the 5x should be our dv now does it make sense then to choose our u to be x well if we want it to be the factor of the integrand such that its derivative is simpler and the derivative of x is one which obviously is simpler so it seems like those should be the proper choices. Now, the same argument here. You got two factors. The x is stopping us from fitting the basic integration formula. But if we take cosine of 3x, which is the more sophisticated or more complicated factor on its own, the question is, do we have an integration formula for that? And we do. Again, that's the linear argument rule. So this is why I've been was stressing the linear argument concept so much, because now we're going to be using it constantly. And cosine we know integrates to be sine, but because of the linear argument kx modified by 1 over k. So 1 over k times the sine of kx. So we have a basic integration formula for cosine 3x. So we'd say that should be our dv choose our u to be x because its derivative again is simpler. Now in the third example we have a choice of x to the seventh or the natural log of x and obviously you would say the natural log of x is more sophisticated or more complicated but we don't have an integration formula for the natural log of x so the integral of the natural log of x Okay, we don't have this, at least not yet. Okay, actually it requires integration by parts to be able to integrate this. And so we can't pick that to be our dv 
because there is no basic integration formula. So the only factor we could choose to be dv then would be x to the seventh. And we do have a basic integration formula for that, obviously the integral of x to the n, which is x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1, and then plus or constant. So looks like we'd have to choose dv to be x to the seventh, and the natural log of x to be our u. And that is consistent with the guidelines because the derivative of the u being the natural log of x is 1 over x, which is simpler than the natural log of x. At least, I know it's a rational function, but at least it's not a logarithmic operator like the natural log. So those are the guidelines that everybody sticks to. Um, but there is an easy way. Um, and it works for almost everything. There are a few cases where it fails, but this is a method for determining u and v, u and dv, that is, when using integration by parts. It's referenced in Mr. Brown's book. Um, I should note that here at the bottom of page uh, 80. There's a reference to an article where this was written. Uh, in the American Mathematical Monthly, and the author of the article suggested this. When using integration by parts, choose your u in this order, y8. where, and we have talked about this before, L stands for logs, I, inverse trigs, A for algebraics, T for trigonometric, standard basic six trigs, and E for exponentials. So, as I wrote here, if there's a product of two of these types of functions in the integrand, we choose our u to be the first that appears in this little um, acronym, Y8. Um, and then dv is going to be whatever is left over. So let's see if that's consistent with the guidelines that we had established. Um, that is, if we classify x and e with regards to the five main classes of functions here, x is considered to be algebraic. And the exponential e, well, is exponential. And according to Lie 8, then, it tells us to choose u to be the algebraic, which is consistent with our choice using the guidelines. Similarly, in number two here, x is algebraic again cosine trigonometric and according to Lie 8 it says choose the algebraic to be your u and that's consistent with the guidelines as well and then in number three x to the seventh is algebraic natural log of x logarithmic and according to, to Lie 8 tells us to choose the log to be our u which again is consistent with the guidelines. So this method will work for all situations that you're going to encounter in this course. There are a couple <coughs> there are a couple situations where this method fails. Um, but if you were trying it and it failed, you just reverse your choices. But for us, this method's going to work. All right, so now we'll solve the problems. So the first one, x e to the 5x. Now, I'm going to tell you to use integration by parts to evaluate, but um, you would know because, like we did earlier, e to the 5x, we would try to fit the form of e to the u, but our du is just 5dx, and this extra x variable is what's stopping us from fitting the basic integration formula. So we have to choose our u and our dv. 
And so, therefore, we can classify the factors. So we're going to use the Li8 method. X is algebraic. E is exponential. And according to Li8, again, we choose U to be the first that appears in that little hierarchy. And that would be the algebraic. So now here's the structure of the solution that you need to follow. Not only do you want to choose your u, you want to have your u, which in our case is x, in one column with your du directly underneath. And then when you want to have your dv in another column with v directly underneath. So we justified u being x, and now we want dv to be e to the 5x, and with the dv, we should always associate the differential dx. Okay, and then we're going to calculate du directly underneath. Derivative of x is 1, so in differential form, du would be 1 dx, and we integrate dv to get v. And remember, now we're using our basic integration formula for the integral of e to the kx, which is 1 over k, e to the kx. So we get 1 fifth e to the 5x. But we don't include a constant of integration there. And it's not wrong to not include that constant, because 1 fifth e to the 5x is an antiderivative of e to the 5x. It's just not your most general antiderivative. So the idea is that we save the constant of integration for the new integral, because the integration by parts formula says the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. And so we save the constant of integration for when we evaluate this new integral. Okay, now we apply the formula. So this is equal to u, which was x, right here, times v, which we found to be one-fifth e to the 5x, and then minus the integral of v, that's the one-fifth e to the 5x again, and then times our du, which is 1 dx. So with regards to the formula, there's uv minus the integral Here's our v, and there's our du. Now, in the future, I'm not going to show this because there's actually a shortcut, a little um, method that Mr. Truesdell, one of my colleagues, um, I stole it from him. I saw him doing this on the board, and what he did was he made this little trick. He, he took the product of the diagonal to get u times v and then minus the integral of the product of the horizontal to get minus the integral of v times du which is identically the formula diagonals u times v and then we have minus the integral of the product of the horizontal is v du so that little trick gives you the formula. So either way, I'm going to be using the little trick. If you like, you can think of the literal substitution in the formula. But this is very helpful. Um, okay, now, after we get done um, showing the um, or after we get done with the initial substitution into the integration by parts formula, I always suggest you take a step and clean things up. And in particular, do you want to rewrite the first term, maybe in this case, 1 fifth x e to the 5x. But then, in particular, in terms of cleaning things up, what you want to do is factor out any constant multiple that you can from the new integral. And in this case, this one-fifth can come out in front. 
and then we have the integral of e to the 5x with respect to x left over. And now notice what happened if you compare the original integral where x was stopping us from fitting a basic integration formula to the new integral, the x has vanished and the new integral does fit a basic integration formula. That's the formula for e to the kx again. So therefore we can integrate. We're finished with this first piece. That first piece is part of the solution. But now here we have minus one-fifth and then integrating e to the 5x again we get one-fifth e to the 5x and that's the point where we had our constant of integration. So then we recopy the first term again because that's part of the solution. Multiply the two one-fifths together, we get one twenty-fifth e to the 5x, and then plus our constant. And that would end it. Now, just one note, you could stop right there for me. The textbook does like to factor, and what they're going to factor in this case is a little awkward. You're not really used, probably, to factoring fractions. But when you factor fractions, you factor the least common denominator, which is 25. So I'm going to factor a 1 over 25 and another common factor of e to the 5x. And then reverse multiply to get 1 fifth, I'd need a 5. And looks like I need the x, but then to get the second term, all I need is a minus 1. So the factoring does make it look more aesthetically pleasing. But I'm not concerned about that. Remember, put the double bars. That means you could stop and you'll get full credit. All right, so that's how it works. So going on to another classic example. These are three classic examples, okay, of, again, what I call the single application. And then in the next topic, we'll see multiple applications. But once you realize integration by parts is necessary, and here we do because, as we argued earlier, if it's going to fit a basic form, it would be cosine of u. But that doesn't work because the du is just 3dx. Excuse me, and we have this extra x variable that's stopping us from fitting a basic integration formula. And plus, I'm going to tell you, like I did at the top of the page, use integration by parts to evaluate. But in any event, you, once you realize to use integration by parts, you classify the factors. X is algebraic. Cosine of 3x is trigonometric. And you can use Lie 8. And according to Lie 8, the algebraic is the choice of u over the trigonometric. So you have to do this work off to the side. And remember, there's two things. We want one column with u and du underneath, and u is x again. And then leave some space in between and another column with dv, and that's cosine of 3x. And with the dv, remember, you should always associate the differential dx. Then we calculate our du. Derivative of x is 1, so the differential 1 dx. Integrate dv to get v. And when we integrate cosine of 3x, again, remember the basic formula for the integral of cosine of kx. It's 1 over k sine of kx, positive. So cosine of 3x integrates to be 1 third sine of 3x. And again, we do not add the constant of integration there. And then we're ready for the integration by parts formula. So using Mr. Truesdale's trick, product of the diagonal gives u times v minus the integral of the product of the horizontal gives us minus the integral of v du, which is our formula. So applying the formula, we have u, which is x, times v, one-third sine of 3x, and then minus the integral of v, one-third sine of 3x, times our du, which was just 1 dx. Okay, and then I'm going to clean things up. So 
After you apply the integration by parts formula, I always suggest one step, clean things up, reorganize the first term, one third x sine of 3x in this case. And in particular, when you clean things up, the point is to factor any constant multiple that you can from the new integral. And in this case, we can pull out the one third. And we're left with the integral of the sine of 3x times 1, which is just the sine of 3x with respect to x. And once again, look at, compare the original integral where we had this extra value variable of x that was stopping us from fitting a basic integration formula. Compare that original to the new integral and notice that the x has vanished, okay? And so now this new integral fits a basic integration formula. And along with the cosine of kx formula, don't forget there's the integral of the sine of kx with respect to x as well. That's negative 1 over k times the cosine of kx. And then plus or constant. So... We can now integrate, so we have the one-third x sine of 3x that is part of the solution, so we just recopy that, the negative one-third tags along, and integrating the sine of 3x, we get negative one-third cosine of 3x, close up the parentheses, and I'll add the constant of integration at that point. So, finishing it up, recopy the first term, multiply the two one-thirds together. They're both negative, so positive one-ninth, and then the cosine of 3x, plus their constant of integration. Okay, so then the final classic example. So, again, these are classics. Algebraic exponential, algebraic trig, and now we've got an algebraic and a log. Okay, so products of all these types that do not fit basic integration formulas. We argued why earlier that this one does not fit a basic integration formula. Basically because if logs in there choose it to be or u, if you're lucky, the du will be there. And the du is 1 over x, but guess what? We're not lucky. We don't have 1 over x. We have x to the 7th. So we classify x to the 7th algebraic natural log of x logarithmic and now according to Lyate so again our little acronym here it says to choose u to be the log so again the structure of the solution one column with u which is the natural log of x in this case du directly underneath leave some space another column with dv which is x to the seventh in this case and with the dv, always associate the differential dx. Okay, so now calculate our du. That's 1 over x times the differential dx. Integrate dv to get v. <clears throat> Make sure you put yourself in the integration mode here. Integration, Integrating x to the 7th is x to the power 1 greater, which is 8, divided by that new exponent. Again, no constant of integration there. We wait for the new integral. <clears throat> then the integration by parts formula can again be realized by the product of the diagonal to give u times v, and then minus the integral of the product of the horizontal to give us minus the integral of v du. And so we have, this is now equal to u natural log of x times v x to the eighth over eight and then minus the integral of v x to the eighth over eight times our du which is one over x dx all right now we want to clean things up now the first term i'm going to write as one eighth x to the 8th natural log of x 
I mean, you could put it all over eight rather than the one eighth as the coefficient. But I think I've expressed that preference many times where I prefer to have the fractional coefficient in front. Okay, from the new unit rule, there's two things we need to do. First off, we're going to factor out this 8 that's in the denominator, because any constant multiple you want to bring out in front, so that'll come out as 1 eighth. And then we're going to have the integral of, because what's left is just variables. And here's something very important. Don't make this harder than it is. It's just a basic algebraic simplification. That is, we have eight factors of x in the numerator of this fraction, and one factor of x in the denominator of this fraction. So we just simply cancel the one factor of x, and we're left with x to the seventh. So don't make that harder than it is. A lot of times I'll see students get to this point and then they kind of make up their own rules. But just make special note that it's always just going to be a basic algebraic simplification. Essentially just reduce this factor by one power. right? Okay, and then look at the new integral. It, what was bothering us was the log was in there and we didn't have anything to go with for our du. But now look, the log's even gone and we just have a nice simple integral. So we integrate, first term is done again, just recopy, second term integrating x to the 7th, get x to the 8th over 8, add our constant of integration at that point, <clears throat> recopy the first term, and multiply the two 8's together, we get 1 over 64, and that's x to the 8th plus or constant. And again, factorizations can be done, but we're not going to be concerned with that. All right, so those are the three classic situations for a, what I'm calling the single application of the integration by parts formula. And so we'll see you next time for topic seven.